Welcome everyone. Uh, this is Sean Foyt here and uh, you are joining. Wow, it's been a heavy day. Uh, very, very intense day. Uh, really sad day um, to be an American. And I know that all of you know by now the news of the 13 or 12 or 13 service members killed, Marines killed in Afghanistan and over 90 Afghani people lost their lives. And I believe ISIS has claimed responsibility for the bombs that went off. And, um, you know, we're just all in shock. And so I am uh, have a mixture of emotions like so many of you out there. I'm angry, I'm frustrated. I am uh, like, I, I, it was hard for me to keep, to be in my right mind to do the things I needed to do today. Cause I just am so, upset and angry and I'm I, the purpose of hosting this prayer meeting tonight and to have a friend of mine come on and share is that we can channel that frustration and anger into the place of prayer because we're really at a place right now where God is our only hope and I know for some of you uh, you know you may think that praying it seems so silly or it seems so futile in a moment like this but Really, I believe it's the most powerful thing that we can do. And so that's the purpose of this gathering. And I want to introduce um, an amazing man, Mr. Tommy Altman. He's with us tonight, and he is a former special ops um, uh, service member. He was in Afghanistan. He was in Iraq. Um, he loves the Lord. He believes in prayer, and he also has a great understanding of the current situation in Afghanistan. And um, I, we are just really honored to have him tonight. We're thankful you're here, Tommy. Thank you for your sacrifice, serving our nation. And thank you for loving Jesus. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. And uh, yeah, and we're, uh, we're, thanks for doing this. This is really important. Uh, it's important that uh, leaders within the church, um, you know, that they pull people together and that they speak out um, and talk about the truth. So it's great. Thank you. Yeah, well, and I, I want to, before he shares and before we pray, I want to just ask you, everybody out there, go ahead and share this live stream, post it, share it, tag it, get it out there. Um, not, not for the purpose of building our own names or anything, but just for the purpose of gathering people to pray. We want as many people that can pray with us tonight as possible. You know, one, the Bible says that one puts a thousand to flight, two puts 10,000. And so the more that we can gather to pray with us um, all over the world, I feel like this is going to be a really powerful moment. So please share that. And Tommy, why don't you, as they're doing that, why don't you just take a minute, share with us a little bit of your history, who you are, um, and then, and then your, your thoughts about what happened today. Um, and we'll just dive into that a little bit to give context uh, before we go into prayer. Sure, sure, absolutely. Uh, so I was uh, in the Air Force Special Operations community. Uh, I was in prior to 9-11. Um, our area of operations was the Middle East. And so obviously after 9-11, um, we were uh, very busy. We were the first in, um, you know, amongst the first into Afghanistan, into Iraq. Um, and uh, man, seeing what's going on today, uh, it's, it's brutal honestly um and it's been going on you know for for a little while now and um and it's having been there and seen what happens on the ground there um it just breaks your heart it breaks your heart uh i've been talking with a lot of um, other special operators um that were in currently and that were in before and then we honestly just feel absolutely abandoned by this administration um it's this administration has made us out to be liars because of how they withdrew. And, you know, and I've heard people say, well, you know, it always happens. It's, you know, it's, it's you can't, you can't change it. This is what's going to happen no matter what. Um, have you been in the military? I just know that that's not true. Uh, there's some basic uh, fundamental things that we never do. Very first is we don't leave our own behind. Um, we don't even leave our fallen on the battlefield. Like, so to leave, American citizens and not just a couple, but we've sent in entire special forces and special operations units to get a couple citizens before. We're talking about thousands and first the numbers are four to 5,000, the numbers get to like five, you know, get to 10,000 
and I've heard numbers because I'm still connected with, um, you know, high ranking government officials in Afghanistan. And they, they suggest numbers that up to 50,000 American citizens that are still unaccounted for and, and are still stuck. And it's, um, it's heartbreaking. Um, they should have been the first ones out before we pulled our military out. We should have pulled out the people that supported us, the Afghanis that worked with us for the last 20 years. Um, our equipment should have come out. The, the fact that this, this administration's failure to withdraw properly has brought the Taliban into the modern age in, in equipment, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's astounding, to be perfectly honest. Um, it's, it's an unmitigated disaster, to say the least. And it, uh, it breaks my heart. It absolutely breaks my heart um, because I've been there. I, I've talked to the people, you know, and we, we were in rooms talking with, with tribal chiefs and so that. And, and the question that they asked when we were there was, how can we trust you? And um, what they're referring to is the fact that uh, often Americans have a very short attention span. And we had to assure them, we promised them that the US government would not abandon them. And that was the only way to get them to engage with us, uh, to, to track the, the ones that we went there to seek justice for. We were there to seek justice against Al Qaeda, uh, the ones who attacked us here. And so I understand the idea that we weren't to stay there and nation build. Um, what I believe we found in the process of being there as long as we were, is that a, a byproduct of us being there was the Afghan people were able to experience freedom. And I, and I know yeah. for here, us in America, we go, okay, you know, we, we take it for granted. We were there for 20 years. There, there are 19 and 20 year old girls that never experienced the brutal hand of the Taliban. And, yeah. and right now, Women and children are being raped and beaten into submission by absolutely barbaric men. And uh, if I'm honest, it, it just, this is why I haven't really talked about it much because um, I, can't, I can't talk about it without being moved to emotion. It just, it's so absolutely frustrating. I'm getting uh, messages from a lot of special operators who did, it takes us a it takes us a long time to deal with um, with what we experience in, in combat, and some guys you know handle it well, some guys don't, and it takes a long time to to either uh, deal with those emotions or to bury them. And what this has done is it has brought all those to the surface for for the people who served over there, and uh, I believe that it's it's a disgrace to our fighting force. Uh, to the veterans who did serve, I think it's a disgrace to the ones that we lost. Um, man, I, I don't even know how to, to talk to people whose family are still here and, and we lost them. It's, man, it's got to be absolutely devastating. You know, not yeah. to mention the ones from 9-11, the families, the, the people that we lost, it just, it's, it's, um, it's really, really, it's really sad. So, so anyway, it's, and I know that for me, you know, I mean, I, I'm also an ordained minister, uh, you know, um, so maybe there's that part of it that makes it more, um, more emotional for me. I don't know, but uh, I just believe that as Americans that we should expect better. Um, yeah. Cause it could have been hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's, that there's a, a responsibility, um, you know, you're coming from, you're coming at it from the military side. I'm coming at it from the mission side, you know, because I think when we were talking, I was over there in Afghanistan as doing missions while you were over there with the military. And, you know, I heard the stories of the Taliban and, and, and they're savages and the things that they do and they're demonically inspired and they're oppressive. And, you know, now you have inroads to ISIS, which what we saw yesterday, I have a lot of, a lot of encounters with them in Iraq, you know, and I'm sure you have more even than me. And so now you have these, you know, Al Qaeda, you have ISIS, you have Taliban, you have this cesspool of terrorism in the middle of that city of Americans trapped in it. You have Marines. I mean, we haven't lost this many, this many service members in one attack in the last decade. 
I mean, today is tragic. Today is historically tragic and embarrassing and sad as Americans. And I think that, you know, I want you to share, I wanted you to share and, and even maybe share a little bit more because people need to understand the gravity of this situation because this is what moves us to our knees in the place of prayer. You know, this is what moves us to gather on September 11th in, in, in the mall in DC. And we just have to say, God, we, we can't do it anymore. Like we, you have to show up in America. You have to show up. You know, this is what pushes us to a place of desperation in prayer. And that's where we got to get to in order to really be serious, where we can't just numb ourselves over with what's happening and try to change the channel. Right. No, I absolutely agree with you. And that's, I believe that's the thing that, um, I believe that's the thing that a lot of people are waiting for. They just wait for the next news cycle. Uh, they think that we just have such a short attention span. My honestly, one of my biggest prayers right now is that we as Americans do not grow numb to what is happening over there, um, because right. we don't. We really don't understand the savagery that these people are capable of. Um, and I think that you're absolutely right. It, it is. It is demonic inspired. It's these men. I mean, okay. So I've heard people say that. <laughs> This is the same Taliban as old. It's not the same Taliban as old. They are more emboldened now than ever before because of how this administration has handled this withdrawal. These men have been brought into the modern fighting age because of what was left behind. They are now able to go door to door in our equipment with our NVGs, with, with our body armor, go door to door. How do these people know who to trust? How do they know that they've seen us there for the last 20 years how do they know who to trust? How do they know who to open the door to? Um, the Taliban, since they've taken back power, they have, and I, I know this from, a, from accounts on the ground, they have gone through villages. They have cut the throats of all men. They have either rounded the women and children up in masses in the middle and taken flamethrowers to them, or any 12-year-old and older, those females were taken and traded amongst the Taliban fighters like baseball clubs. It's it's despicable in, in the highest regard. Like it's, people just don't get it. Like women have been shot in the head for simply not wearing a burqa. There was a, there was a woman whose eyes were gouged out. Her only crime was that she was a police officer because women can't have positions of power. So, you know, people are like, oh, well, it's, it's, their, it's their faith, it's Sharia law. But there are other places that practice Sharia law that look at the Taliban still as savages because of how brutal they are. Women have already been beaten. They're, they're right now, like they're experiencing brutality in a way that as Americans, we don't even feel comfortable hearing about, much less experiencing. They're going door to door. They've got a list of names of people that helped us, whether they're interpreters or, or sympathizers, and they're going door to door to find them. And they're taking them out. They're, they're dismembering them. They're cutting their throats or they're beheading them and hanging them in the streets. These things are happening. And, wow. you know, when, when I saw this take place initially, my very first response is, there's going to be American blood that spilled because of this. And people thought I was being an alarmist. I'm not being an alarmist. I mean, look at today. Like, it's, this is astounding. This was, today passes yearly totals over the last 10 years. Like, I mean, this is, it's, I'm beside myself with it. Um, yeah. Man, we, we are too. And, and, and I, I refuse to, to just, I, I, can't, I couldn't do anything today. I mean, I, I'm just, just thinking of, you know, I, I lost friends in high school and, and, and people that, that I went to high school with that signed up for, you know, to go to Afghanistan and left their families. And I know a lot of people that have had the knock at their door um, that, that those 12 people's families are about to get today. So, man, I think I just want to pray. Um, and, and I would love for you to, to lead us. And, and while we're doing that, we, we're going to post up some prayer points. Tommy's just been amazing and, and kind of crafted some prayer points earlier today. And so we're going to post those up right now and, and please go ahead and share those. Um, and, uh, and share this video as we go into this prayer time. And we're, I wanna pray for uh, the, the um, families of the, the, those that were lost today. I wanna pray for the Americans still trapped there, the troops still there. I wanna pray for Afghani people. And I really wanna pray that God would intervene in this 
horrendous presidency that's allowing this to happen and that Americans would wake up. So go ahead, man, lead us. We'll just bounce back and forth. And guys, as we're praying, I just encourage you to lift your voice. Let's everybody, let's just fill the airwaves of our homes, our cars, our kitchens, our whatever with prayer. Let's just turn this, you know, it, the, the Bible says that he's near to the brokenhearted. And I feel like these are the moments where we can really draw near to the Lord and kind of give him our, our pain and, and pray and ask him to come and, and, and bring a change. So just begin to lift your voice. And why don't you just kick us off, Tommy, and just lead us, man. Absolutely. Father, we come before you tonight. Um, absolutely broken. We're broken for what, what we see your people, human, human beings are capable of. God, we thank you so much that, that you're still in control. Even when things seem dark, even, even when things seem hopeless, that we can still trust you. And it doesn't make sense. Um, it, it really doesn't. But God, you know, like Sean was saying, you, you are near to the brokenhearted. And so tonight, God, we pray for those who lost loved ones. We pray for the American service members, families who are being notified today that their loved ones are no longer with them. God, I pray that you would comfort them, that you would give them peace, that, that you would help them understand that that sacrifice was not in vain. God, I pray for, for all of the Afghanis that, that were lost today. I pray for their loved ones. God, I pray for the nation of Afghanistan. I pray that, that you would be there and that, God, you would intercede in ways that the entire globe has to look at and say, only God, only yeah. God. Because this is a time right now where obviously the work of human beings is failing and we need you. God, I know you're not a silent God. I know that you are not a distant God. So today we ask you right now to wrap your arms around those people that are hurting. Wrap your arms around the people in Afghanistan that are absolutely desperate for freedom. God, I pray that you would protect the, the citizens of America that are still over there, stuck in Afghanistan. God, I pray that you would, you would make them invisible to the Taliban fighters, to anybody who would want to hurt them, I pray the same for the Afghani people that, that have worked with us over these last two decades. God, you know my, I wouldn't be here had it not been for Afghanis. God, I pray that you would protect them. God, I pray that you would, you would show them that you are with them. And I pray that you would draw them to yourselves. That God, I pray that right now, as hard as it is, God, I pray for the Taliban fighters. God, I pray that you would absolutely take away the taste of violence and terror in them. In ways, again, that only you can do. We read in scripture over and over again where you, you steer the hearts of kings, you steer the hearts of armies. So we ask you to do that tonight. God, I pray for our leaders here in America. I pray for this administration, I, pay, I pray for the military leaders. God, get a hold of their hearts. Help them make wise choices and value human life. God, I ask that you would help us as Americans and the world at large not to get numb to this. God, I pray that you would break our hearts every single day, that all of us would be broken and that our hearts would break just like yours does. God, I thank you so much that you are in control. God, I thank you so much that we can always come to you in times of trouble and in times of joy. And God, if I'm honest, I don't know how this could be turned around, but I know that you are the God of impossibilities that time and time again in my life, time and time again in history, you have shown your hand. God, I pray that you would move again in a mighty way. 
that again, the entire world would have to say only God. Yeah, Lord, we just, I just agree with every word that, that Tommy prayed, Lord, we, we, we just start feeling the weight and the heaviness and the deep sadness, God, that Lord, it, it talks about in the word about weep with those who weep, God, and to tonight, there's so many families that are hurting God, not just in, the, in America, but in Afghanistan, there's so much senseless loss, God, that has taken place, Lord, and I just pray, God, that you would give us, Lord, stir our spirit, God, re- push us out of our American comfortable bubble, Lord, where we can easily mask over these deep longings of prayer. We can easily mask them over with something else that we got to do or somewhere else that we got to go. And it's easy for us, God, to just change the channel. And I pray, Lord, that you would put a burden on people's hearts from across the nations, Lord, across the nations, God, that they would begin to pray for Afghanistan, Lord. They would begin to pray for for the military. They would begin to pray, God, for those that are trapped in that nation. It's not even just Americans. There's thousands of Americans, but there's lots of Canadians and Europeans and people that just can't get out. They're, They're not able to get through the checkpoints. Lord, I just echo that prayer of Tommy, Lord, make them invisible to this, to the forces of darkness. We know that you've done this before. We've heard the stories, God of people getting able to get through, Lord. We've read the stories in the book of Acts. We just pray right now, God, in 2021, in the Middle East, manifest the fullness of your presence and your miracles, God, to save and to deliver and to heal. And we do pray, God, we pray, God, for those hearts, God, that are raging right now with demonic violence, Lord, the Taliban leaders, God, arrest them, God. We believe you can do it. We've seen you do it with members of ISIS and Al-Qaeda, God. Why not with members of the Taliban, God? Do it, Lord, now and get the glory. And Lord, we pray, God, for, for, for wisdom, Lord. We pray, God, that you would expose, Lord, all of the, the crookedness and wickedness and the inability, God, to, to, to step up to the plate in this current administration. Shake it all down, God. And Lord, raise up leadership, God. Raise up leaders in America right now, leaders in the church, leaders in government, Lord, to speak the truth, God. Raise up people, God, with wisdom and discernment. We pray for those those uh, American leaders that are on the ground that are having to make these tough decisions. God, give them guidance, give them wisdom, give them grace. Lord, we pray for all of the all of those right now, Lord, that have loved ones in, in Afghanistan. Lord, all the, the service members that have, all the people that have loved ones over there that are serving, and now they're just gripped with fear and panic that they're gonna be the next one to lose their loved one. I pray tonight, God, that you would release uh, the peace that passes all understanding over them, God, that you would release release grace over them, that you would blanket them, God, that you would break their anxiety, Lord, that even in this moment, Lord, where they're worried and they're anxious and they're hopeless, God, I pray that you would come to their aid, God, and be near to the brokenhearted. Lord, I pray, God, Lord, we don't know how this whole thing is going to work out. We don't know how, God, that you're going to turn this into good, Lord, but we, but we know that we have a promise, that some way, somehow, God, you're able to get glory out of this. We just pray out of this situation that seems tragic, that seems senseless, that seems hopeless. We pray, God, that you would find a way to get the glory, God, that you would turn it around, Lord, and that you would be the only one that would get glory for what's about to take place in that nation, God. We pray for the U.S. military, God, those that are laying their lives down tonight, God, visit them, God, as they're sleeping, God, visit them, calm them, give them energy, give them vigilance, Lord. We pray for every every plan of the enemy, every plan of ISIS, every attack of the Taliban, of Al-Qaeda, God, that it would be exposed in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that the same thing, Lord, from from Jehoshaphat, Lord, as he, as they begin to worship, ambushes were sent against the camp of the enemy. Lord, we pray that ambushes would be sent tonight against the camp of the enemy. Anybody that's coming to do harm, God, those that are going to carry out suicide bombs, God, detonate those bombs on them right now, wherever they are, before they're around people. God, do things that you've done throughout history, God. We just beg you tonight, God, we ask you tonight, and I just want to pray, I just feel like there's a grace for us to just pray right now that God would expose, that things would be exposed, plans and agendas, Lord, that would be carried out. We know that that, that there are names of 
the U.S. military. There are names of, of the allies that have been given to the Taliban. We pray even tonight that whoever gave those names, God, that they would lose that list, God, that they would no longer have that list, that it would get deleted, that it would disappear from, from whoever has it. Uh, I just pray that, God, you would expose the plans of the enemy tonight, Lord, in Afghanistan. We pray an end to these terrorist strikes, God. We pray an end to the killings. We pray an end to the loss and the devastation. And Lord, we pray that you would find somehow Lord, to work this for your glory. I just want to encourage you, you guys, just to keep praying and, and keep, keep, keep them in your thoughts and, and not just like in your thoughts and prayers, like people tweet out, you know, but like every, you know, if you're at a stoplight or if you're in between something or before you, you, you know, your head hits the pillow to go to sleep, like say a prayer and continue to keep these guys on your hearts, you know, that are over there risking their lives and, 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 you know, I, I feel like, and Tommy, I'm going to let you say anything in closing that's on your heart, but I feel so compelled in my spirit that, 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 this, that there's a build up to a crescendo of prayer that's going to happen on the mall on September 11th. I just feel like now is the time. Like we, we just got to go for it. We got to gather people. We got to mobilize our nation to pray. We're in a moment of desperation. And, and today, as I was going through all the invoices, you know, I was, have have an invoice like the first invoice for dc it's like two hundred and eighty thousand dollars or something we have to pay for production and all the stuff you know that's just the beginning part of our bills and i was just praying like as we make these transfers and as we pray for resources i was praying god let every dollar that we invest god let it be like let that even be intercession like for america as we get together and we gather on that sacred ground there in the National Mall that a move of your spirit would happen, that a, a turnaround in, in America would, would take place. And I know you're going to be joining us there, Tommy, and we're excited. And by the way, Tommy's also running for Congress in, in the state of Virginia, in the area where I went to high school in Virginia Beach. And so all you Virginians out there, all of you people rise up and let's support him. And, uh, and, and we can put a link to his website and his stuff up right now. So you guys can follow his journey. Um, but man, I'm so glad you're going to be joining us on the, on September 11th. And is there anything else you want to say before we go here and, uh, continue to stay in this place of prayer? Um, yeah, actually, well, before we before we close, I want to pray for our uh, service members that are over there right now, um, if that's all right. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, please, please. God, God, I want to pray for protection for the men and women who are over there serving on behalf of us right now. God, I know what it feels like to be on soil that is not your own. God, I know how scared some of them are. I know how angry some of them are, especially right now after what they saw. God, I pray that you would protect them. God, I pray that you would give them wisdom and insight that they would sense fear before it's too late to respond. That they would sense danger before it's too late to respond. God, I pray that you would protect their minds as they're seeing things that we as human beings that you did not want us to see. God, I pray that you would help them. I know yes, how Jesus. difficult this is going to be for them to process, not even just for now, for, for years, for the rest of their life. They're going to see these images over and over again when they close their eyes to go to sleep. God, I pray that you would heal them. I pray that you would help them find ways to connect with you. Having been there and having wrestled through that myself, had it not been for you, there's no way that I would have ended up where I am, am now. And so, God, I just pray for them. God, I pray that you would, you would comfort them. Because I know that the guilt that they're going to feel for not having been able to save their friends, for not being able to save everybody there that they see, that are holding up papers, begging, just begging to come in, that mothers are throwing their babies over, over razor wire. God, I know, that, I know how absolutely Jesus. burdened they are. God, I pray that you would Jesus. heal them, protect them, let them know this is not their fault. God, we are with them. We are supporting them. God, I pray that you would be there with them. God, I pray that you would comfort those who lost friends today. 
because they got to go back out there tomorrow and get back to work. God, I pray that you'd be with them. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you for everything you did for, for me and for my teammates when I was over there, God. And I pray that you would do the same, if not more, for the ones that are over there right now, that they would feel your presence like never before. Even if they don't know you, even if they've rejected you in the past, God, I pray that right now, that they would feel your peace. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you would move in that space, that they would actually feel your presence in a physical way. God, we thank you so much that you are more powerful than anything that we see. You're more powerful than anything that we don't see. God, you are there. And I pray that you would act on our behalf. I pray you would act on, on those who are advocating for freedom and peace. And those who are intent on evil, God, I pray, as Sean said, that you would just absolutely disrupt their plans. Thank you so much for being there for us and for always being there and not being a distant God who doesn't care. Thank you. We love you. Amen. Amen. Sean, wow. thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for this time. Um, and I would encourage everyone to, to take time every day, every morning when you get up and your feet hit the floor and be thankful that you're here in America. But let us be reminded that there are people who would do absolutely anything. No matter where you're at, no matter what you find yourself right now here in the United States of America, there are people who would do anything at all to have your place. Let us be grateful for it. And let it always bring us back to our knees to pray for those who want exactly what we have. Let us be thankful for it. And let us fight for it every single day. Yeah. Wow. So powerful, Tommy. Thank you. Thanks for giving us, um, for sharing your heart. Thanks for praying. And uh, I, I do feel, um, I just felt felt the presence of the Lord. And, and I know I feel feel better but i also feel burdened and so i would encourage you guys um share this share this prayer this is a really powerful time share it out there to the world and let's let's as every time it gets replayed let's just believe that god's going to keep moving and we'll keep praying we'll stay in touch with you tommy um we'll provide those links with the prayer points again and uh we'll gather together uh in you know two and a half weeks We'll see you there, Tommy, on the mall, and uh, we'll be gathered with other military leaders and uh, first responders, Gold Star families, and a lot of Americans that we got to have God move in our nation right now. So God bless you. Thank you so much, Tommy. Uh, look up the information about uh, his campaign and, and him running in Virginia, and I'm going to be actually in Virginia Beach next Saturday, so hopefully I'll see you then at Rock Church. If you're in the Virginia area, guys, we're going to be there for Let Us Worship, and we're definitely going to take some time to pray for the military that night. So God bless you. Have a great night. We'll keep praying, man. Thanks for helping us. Absolutely. Thank you.